Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I like underdog Sam Solomon over unbeaten favorite Dominic Wade. Right? Understand Wade is a greater than two to one favorite. I personally believe that he might not be ready for Sam Solomon. I'm going to hedge the play, and I believe the play has to be hedged because Solomon had an injury in his last fight against Jermaine Taylor and hit the canvas three or four times. In other words, Solomon was having a problem with his balance. Solomon is in his 40s. If that injury resurfaces, he might not go the distance. Nonetheless, I think Solomon's a better fighter than unbeaten Dominic Wade. I'm shocked at the odds. I like the underdog to win this fight, but I'm going to hedge the play with Wade by KO. Right? Understand what this means. If the fight goes the distance, and if the greater than 2-1 to one favorite wins the fight, you lose it all. Right? Let's talk about it. First, the styles. I know Solomon's in his 40s, but if you have skills, and if you don't rely on youth, in other words, if you don't rely on a lot of, let's say, hand speed, or a lot of foot speed, right or reflexes if your style is such that you can defend yourself without having to trust reflexes in other words if you have a hand up or if you have a lean and you're not relying on you know read and recognition on the spot a punch coming then you move your head then I believe your age really doesn't matter that much so you have technicians Juan Manuel Marquez Bernard Hopkins, right? Uh, Vladimir Klitschko. You have technicians who are able to operate at ages that we used to consider to be too old in boxing, right? Sam Solomon is a technician, right? He has it figured out where he's not trying to beat you with hand speed. He's trying to beat you with timing. Don't look at the fact that he's in his 40s. What I want you to do instead is to look at the quality of his opposition. Understand there is a huge gap between these two men. Sam Solomon's last two fights, you don't even have to go back that far, were against Felix Sturm and Jermaine Taylor. Right? You're talking about fights for the IBF middleweight championship against guys who had been champions earlier in their career. Right? To give you an idea record-wise, Felix Sturm, 39-3 and at the time of his fight against Sam Solomon. Jermaine Taylor, 32-4. and Right? Both Sturm and Taylor, of course, spent their careers fighting men like Martin Murray like Carl Frotch and others. In other words, championship level guys who you yourself have seen in other championship level fights. By contrast, Dominic Wade might be unbeaten. Let me tell you the records of his last four opponents. Deshaun Johnson, 15 wins, 13 losses. Marcus Upshaw, 15 wins, 11 losses. Nick Brinson, 16 and 1, right? Eddie Hunter, 10 wins, 11 losses, 2 draws. I think it's fair to say that Dominic Wade hasn't fought the same level of opposition that Sam Solomon has fought, right? Sam Solomon has fought world class competition. Dominic Wade even though he had a decorated amateur career, even though if you go back to the amateurs, he fought some guys in the amateurs, he hasn't fought that level of competition in his pro career, right? Yet, he's supposed to be a greater than two to one favorite. Understand, Vegas is telling you that if these guys fought three times, Wade would win at least two of the three. It's a head scratcher. 
Let's talk about the styles too, because I believe they give Solomon a clear advantage. Understand Solomon has a rare gift in boxing. It's rare. He's an off cadence fighter. He's so awkward, guys cannot get his timing down. Right? He moves around the ring, he's hinting at throwing punches. If you go to block the punch, then you'll realize Solomon has a little delay on the punch. Right? His game is geared for after you've raised a hand. Right? He faints, you raise a hand, then he throws the punch and hits you around the guard. Right? It's the kind of timing that completely threw off Felix Sturm. Sturm couldn't land his jab. Solomon kept hitting him in between rhythm. In other words, he's an off-rhythm fighter. His timing is so fine-tuned that he can faint you to death. Right? Just imagine you're a fighter, and you're fighting a guy, and you don't want to be countered. Right? You don't want to throw a punch on this side because as your punch is on the way there, if the other guy is slippery and can dodge your punch, you're open on this side. Right Now just imagine if you're fighting a guy with a herky-jerky motion who's a little bit shorter than you and knows how to hide himself in the ring. Right, So you catch up to him, you see him, you want an opening before you let this hand go, right? Because the worst thing that could happen is you throw this hand, then he comes back and hits you, right? Now, just imagine you can't read whether or not your opponent is about to throw a punch because he's herky-jerky. He's herky-jerky. So you're waiting for an opening. You can't decide if there's an opening. Your offense is dampened. This hand stays home. Or worse yet, you think there's an opening. The guy looks like he's ready to get hit. You start to throw the punch, and then there's a delay. The guy throws a punch back with a loop. You miss your shot. This guy hits you, and he does that all day. If you look at the Jermaine Taylor fight, you're going to notice that Taylor was losing those early rounds. Right? Don't trust the judges' scorecards. Trust your eyes. Solomon, when he's healthy, this is his most recent fight, is beating Jermaine Taylor. Let's be clear, too. Solomon goes into that fight as the IBF world middleweight champion. In other words, two fights ago. Solomon held the belt, right? Just two fights ago, the fight before last, right? Solomon wins the belt. So my point is this. Solomon's a world-class fighter. <clears throat> I look at Wade's feet. He seems clumsy and methodical. Look at his legs, right? I don't think this guy has the gift of timing. I don't think this guy's the kind of guy who's going to be in there with a very complicated opponent, right? An opponent's going to be herky-jerky. And I don't think Wade is going to have the confidence to know when to throw punches, right? So, it's a high-risk play. It's always high-risk when you're taking the opponent of a guy who's a greater than 2-1 to favorite. It's always high-risk when... You're betting against the unbeaten younger favorite. But that's what I'm recommending here. <clears throat> I like Sam Solomon, the underdog, to win the fight. And I'm going to hedge the play with Wade by KO. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.